new era foundation. You also founded that foundation. Yeah, well, it was founded in 1999. It mm -hmm. actually was founded for especially young people. Um, what new era is doing right now? They embark upon a partnership um, with a uh, organization from from the United States, the U.S. Mm -hmm. It's actually a baseball organization by the name of the Piper Davis um, Youth Baseball League. And it's a league um, between the ages of 8 and to 22 years. And what they do is they try to go into the inner cities and they, they help to train youngsters to be able to, to make it in the majors, in Major League Baseball. Um, it was named Piper Davis League because Piper Davis used to play with the, the, with the Negro League in the States. Mm -hmm. And in those days, um, um, black folks were not supposed to play with a normal, a normal Major League Baseball um, organization. So what they did is they made their own league called the, the Negro League. And, and, um, it was quite a league too, huh? Yeah, I remember that. Sorry. Piper Davis was one of them that played. And Piper Davis gave that, that name to the founder of this particular um, tournament that we're going to be going on. Um, it's called the Piper Davis um, International Tournament that's going to be held in um, July, from July 11th to July 16th. And uh, <clears throat> Mr. Fred Plump, he's actually the founder of it. And he was here back in February together with his executive director. And, and one of the persons I have to mention as well is one of, of our own. He's also in the organization by the name of Raphael Skeet. What, what Raf are you doing now? Raphael Skeet now, he's um, actually just training persons, mm -hmm. training baseball players back in the States. And um, well, he was a major leaguer, right? Yeah, he, he, he left here to become a major league ba baseball player. He played, I think, I can't remember, I think it's a Baltimore Orioles or one of them. He, yeah. he went and he signed with from St. Martin to go to the U.S. Along with Glenn Patterson, I think, and it was Mr. Rohan as well, the gentleman that uh, is the director of the, the prison. He was one of them also that went uh, <clears throat> as a Major League Baseball player to try out. Um, but Raphael is still in the United States, and he's the one that hooked me up and got me involved with this Piper Davis League. And he said, Jeffrey, what, what you can do is try to promote the youngsters here in St. Martin because um, those youngsters that um, leave uh, little league baseball or Pony baseball, they don't didn't have anywhere to go, and it was a void between the ages of 16 to 22. So he said, why not try to make a, a team here in St. Martin, and then you can always come up to the international tournament that we hold every year in July. So we did that, and now we're busy now with the training of the boys. We have about 27 boys now with our training, but actually we're going to be able to we're going to boil it down to 16 players that will be traveling to 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 the states to play. Uh, I want to just jump back there quick to sure. Raphael Skid. Yeah. When last you saw him in St. Martin? Raphael Skid was here in Fe February. Was he here too? He when, when I called you the last time, uh -huh, was Raphael was time. one of them that came along with the Piper Davis League. He's okay. part of that particular organization as well. Yeah, no, because we, we could not uh, get them on the show because you, you called me at the last minute. Oh, yeah, 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 because, you see, they came yeah. last minute as well because oh, okay. we were fighting hard to get them here. And finally, we got them, and I, I want to thank a lot of sponsors that made that possible to be, for them to be here. They well, came about with about six guys, and mostly former Major League Baseball players they came with, so a good time. former coaches. So we had, we had a great time. We were on all the, the radio stations, etc. So, but we just didn't get, get, got a chance to come on your um, your um, program, yeah. which we we much we, we regretted very very much. But I'm telling you from now yeah. that they come back in May from May 19 to 26. So I'm letting you know from now that we are putting it our exactly <laughs> just fill us in between that time. All right. Yeah, but you know it, it's quite interesting what you're doing with the youngsters because yeah. um, baseball it's been around. Very long. Most my life was, and we used to play baseball. With yeah. the kids. I played baseball league, um, mm -hmm. but before that we played a, a, a league called the Bush League, and the Bush League was a league that we played without uniforms. We just was playing against different um, uh -huh. different neighborhoods. We would call it the Cool Sack Stars and the Saunders Boys and and the South Reward guys. And then what happened? Um, I, I think it was Mr. Baco Richardson yeah. and Mr. Um, Lewis Brown. That's Major Brown. And then there were one or two other guys, I think Raul Illich was one of them as well. They decided to put together the, the Little League um, Baseball and the Latin American Championship. And in 1977, I think they started with that. And then that was the first time we ever got uniforms to play with. And it, it was just a very excited time. You know, it's interesting because we also had uh, one of our own in the Netherlands, uh, Mr. Richardson, I can't remember. 
No, I, I think it's um, Denzel Richardson. No, no, no. Um, he used to. Oh, Hamilton. No, no. Hamilton, Hamilton my cousin. Yeah, top, yeah. Uh, he was one of the top baseball US. players in, 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 in the Netherlands. Oh, we could forget if you go, your cousin. If, it's my, my family. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I remember that because my mother always told me, your family is a great baseball player. Yeah. And um, he was, if you call Hamilton name, that's a big name in, 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 um, in the Netherlands. Yeah, people still recognize he, him. Yeah, today. and he's also in, in, in the Hall of Fame in, in the Netherlands. Uh -huh. As one of the b the major baseball players, he also told me when he was there, we was there, he did a home run home run derby. I think it was um, with Hank Aaron from the states. Yeah. So he was a very good player. So so now um, tell us about the idea behind New Era Foundation and and what and is going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, what is happening is we did like a, a, a introduction of the of the um, the Piper Davis League. <laughs> And what we're doing is we're carrying these guys up to, um, to Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, on July 11th to the 16th to participate in this tournament. After we finish with the tournament, then we're coming back to St. Martin to start the league between the ages of 16 to 22 years. Because we have a gap there, a void there, where nobody do anything after they finish the league and, and pony league. And then the baseball association, they, they plan to start back with the, dub, the double A baseball. So we're telling them, no, just give us the league between 16 and 22, and we're going to be the ones to handle that. We're trying to get at least um, minimum four teams to start the league with. And then from there, we're going to be having persons, um, once they're selected, go to Bam um, Birmingham every year to participate in this, um, in this uh, international tournament. What's surprising is that, uh, you remember, in the... 70s and the 80s, baseball it was big. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's just. Big. You know, I, I just was walking the street a couple of days ago, and I saw a guy that I respected so much in baseball by the name of Adolf Stanford. He used to play with a team called Banco Popular. I never forgot that. That, that was our team in those days, and those guys was. I mean, they were amazing. I feel if 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 they had the kind of opportunities that we had now, yeah. there would have been a lot of major league baseball players in the states from St. Martin, St. Martiners. Yeah, that, that bank of was was a bank on Front Street. That it was a bank on yeah. that that they, they changed the name after to Barclays Bank. Right. But that bank, they had a team out there. This world, guys like Henry Thomas, who's now training this team. Really? He was a part. Yeah, he was part of Bank of Bobolat as well. Oh, okay. He's one of the coaches for this team that we're taking to um to Alabama. Then we had also Jimmy Bell and Gaston Bell. We had the Brookson brothers, Raymond Brookson, Julian Brookson. We also had um Mr. Um, Chumalau. His name is Roland Bryson. He was one of them in the team as well. And then Caribbean Lumber was a very good team. But after Caribbean Lumber, that was the best team in those days. Yeah, yeah. in those days they were the, the best team that you had. There was a guy named Naldo. Uh, Jacobs. Jacobs. Naldo Jacobs was a great baseball player as well, and he played in the Netherlands as well. Yeah. He and his brother Sam Jacobs. So we so we did a lot yeah. in baseball, and then we just went dead. And then we let we just cricket we let cricket take over. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how cricket got in, but my father told me uh -huh. back in his time he used to play yeah, cricket. He used to play cricket. He so told I me that. Little Toronto. I didn't even know that, you know. So. So cricket was something that was very big in, 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 in those days. Yeah. But but in my time, baseball took over. But I you think never played cricket, Jeff? You no, out? I never no. played cricket. Wow. In our time, we never played cricket. I mean, we, we were the same. I used to play cricket in town. No, nah, but you're much older than me, Mr. Gibb. Yeah, I, I'm a young guy compared to you. I'm a no, young guy compared you to you. think this guy is? I'm a very <laughs> young guy compared to you, <laughs> I guess. I didn't even know you in Milton Peters College. I know what the Milton Peters College is. <laughs> it was, okay. when, I, when I finished, that just opened the same year. Yeah, but I, I, I started Milton Peters College back in 78, I think it was. Yeah. And I, I didn't know you in those days. I'm 75, what old are you? <laughs> if you're 75, then, then, then I'm older. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. I'm just 51 years old. Uh, well, you're a little boy, man. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> But yeah. I was around. I, yeah. I've been around. You've been around? Of course, yeah. I've been around. <laughs> I mean, of course. Yeah, I did a whole I lot of stuff. Yeah, 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 I did a lot so of yeah, stuff. No, I'm, I'm just, well, I'm, I'm six years older than you, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So, you know, it's amazing that baseball um, really died. I'm happy to see now that you're trying to do something yeah. about it. We're going to bring it back because one of the things is Aura Gibbs is important, and that's one of the things that, that the states have very, very good with. Mm. with, with their, their um, sports, etc., is concerned. You have to market the sport. If you don't market anything, it's not going to work. But you need money. Yeah, of course you need money to market it. Because you look at, if you look at cricket, 
you know, uh, Max Maxwell and Magical, they really instrumental. put a lot of money out yeah, yeah. behind Cricket. If you don't have money, then you, you, you're not yeah. going to go anywhere. Yeah. 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 I understand that. But we plan to have a game coming up, um, when the guys came, when the guys come down, the delegation from the state, mm -hmm. we plan to have a, 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 a a, a game between the Little League um, selection and the team that is going to Alabama. Yeah. We want to tell the, the parents, friends, I mean, St. Martin people, the, the general public, come out and look at the game. Because I, I go to the Little League ballpark now, I, I hardly see anybody on, on the field. You might see just a handful of parents. And, and that, that's it's always been like that. No, not it's, it's been like that now. In all time when we played baseball, my father, after he finished work, used to come straight to the game and look at the games. Yeah, that's your father, but yeah, I've and, been and speaking with most of the guys who had the, you speak with Brown, you speak with, mm. the, the two Browns, actually. You, you know, mean, you mean the Brown, um, the, the, you had the one that had the Pony League? Yeah, you had yeah. Major Brown and you had the other. The um, Pony League, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you hear, and even um, the gentleman who passed away recently, what's his name, that had Baco? Baco, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you had also Beck yeah. that used to all be the, the, yeah, all these people the, the, the umpire. The little league, and yep. these were guys who took over for many parents because a lot of parents didn't show up to watch the kids on yep. Saturdays. But my father did. My yeah, father your father was a, a remarkable man. Yeah, he yeah, came definitely. every time he finished work. He used yeah. to come there, and when I see him, it, it made me want to even play better ball. No, I knew your and, father, and parents yeah. are very important. Yeah, and that's why with my son, when he played, he, he used to be a soccer player. And when he played, I make sure I go to the field all the time to see him play because when you see a pair around, it makes you, it gives you the impression that you have to play well. So maybe maybe with, with this uh, whole program you all are doing, yep. should encourage parents to yep. really find the time. We, we are encouraging parents. There are parents that, in, that is involved already, mm -hmm. and, I, and I really commend those parents. But we have to get all the parents involved. And, and one of the things that, that is important also, um, or is the fact that some parents work two and three jobs. And sometimes they have no time to, to, to come to the games to see the games. Yeah. And, and, and that's a big problem. We have to start to, to, to look at ways and means of giving these parents, especially the, 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 the mothers, an opportunity to go out and, and support their, their children. So um, the, the New Era Foundation is organizing this special um, event. Yeah. Right. You have the, the coaches coming in in May of this yeah, year. Yeah, so. May, May 19th to the 26th, they're coming in, and they're going to be together with the local coaches. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the ones selecting the 16 players to travel to Alabama back in, Ju in July. And now all these uh, youngsters that are in school right now? Yeah, some of them go to school, mm -hmm. some of them are working, because you have kids from 16 to 22 years. Okay. So some of them are in school. But, but, but the majority of them have, I mean, they have jobs. How important is education to you in this whole program? Very important. That's the most important thing. Uh, where the Piper Davis League is concerned, mm -hmm. the, the main thing is to get a college education because one of the things that they realize is that years ago, before that, when they used to just uh, concentrate on the baseball alone, in the Major League Baseball, getting them involved and making sure they, they become good baseball players, when something happened to them physically that they can't play baseball anymore, they get, they, they get turned away. And what, what they, they make sure that they do is that they, got, they get a college degree, so in the event that something happens to them, they can still fall back to the college degree and become somebody. Because these guys make a whole lot of money playing baseball. Uh, you ever try to get Andrew Jones to come? I never tried to get him, but I heard that he's now in Curacao making a baseball stadium. Mm. And now uh, we're going to try our best to see if we can get him to come to St. Martin to speak at least to the youngsters he's a, he's with regards to um, yeah. baseball. So don't the guy, he was here in this program oh, yeah. with his father. Yeah, and oh, I remember people. that. Yeah, <laughs> he came in his father. I remember that, yeah. And, that was and they're actually from Aruba. Father, yeah. Pardon? His father. His father from Aruba. Yeah, okay. It will be good if we can get him because I, I think it will show the youngsters in St. Martin that here you have a guy from Curacao mm. that made it really big in yep. baseball. Yep. You know, I mean, he was a little arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, I and his father was, and him had quite a uh, discussion over that even when they were here in the studio. Oh, yeah. you know, but sometimes it helps to have your own mind because you, know, you can listen to other people, but in the end you gotta listen to your inner, be, yeah, your inner right. self. I, I believe that. I, I believe that <clears throat> at the end of the day you have to know what you want out of life. And, and, and what is important to our uh, we have to have um, certain models um, that we could, we could be hold as examples and say, I want to be an Andrew Jones as well. I want to make sure that I do whatever it takes to become a major league baseball player. Just this morning, I was at the school. I, I did some reading because 
uh, Orion's Hall has a book week, mm -hmm. and they invited me to, to read to the children. And one of them told me that they, uh, I asked them what they would want to become. And one of them said, a basketball player. So I said, but you, you want to be a, 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 a Michael Jordan. He said, yes, I want to be as good as Michael Jordan. But we have to take it a step further and say, um, we supposed to have guys here in St. Martin that we can touch. Persons like Raphael Skeet and people that, that make, it, make it big, like even Andrew Jones, that we can touch and say, I want to be like Andrew Jones, as opposed to going far away and say, um, um, Michael Jordan, I want those persons that you can't even touch because you don't know them personally. You should have people want to be uh, Jeffrey Richardson too. Sure, but there are people. This morning when I went to speak to the, the class, after the class they all came, they hugged me up and, and, and it was like, wow. It felt very good to know that all these kids, you know, they, they, they want to be around you and, and I want to make sure that when I die, I want to le leave a legacy behind for these kids. It's a young man, you were talking about dying. Yeah, but, but dead is for everybody. And I understand that. So, so from now, I, I, I'm starting to work and do what I have to do and what God called me to do in this earth. Mm -hmm. And that is? That is to make sure that I, I, I be an example, make sure that I give um, young people opportunities, mm -hmm. especially the, the next generation. Because at the end of, at, at the, end of the day, oral, we have to pass the baton on to them. Because we're not going to be here forever. So the baton has to pa be passed on to them, either by will or by force. So it's better we prepare them from now. But how do you, how you look at the, the facilities on the island for baseball? Yeah. Well, we have about two facilities right now. Um, and those facilities, we have to upgrade them. Um, I remember we had a Raul Illich as, as well. But now Raul Illich is more a track and field um, baseball stadium. And that is something we have to be very careful with. One of the things that we are planning to do, I spoke to um, the, um, the players in the United States about it, to see if we can get a piece of land here. And I'm busy negotiating with somebody to have a good piece of property that we could put down a, a kind of major league baseball stadium here on St. Martin. But, but Franz wasn't doing that with the whole connection where he had um, from soccer to cricket to baseball, and it's a huge piece of property. And, on the Pawn Island. No, but we're getting another. Uh, we're going more out in, in, the, in the country. Oh. I've already spoken to that person. I, I don't want to um, say exactly disclose where, where it is, but it's a nice piece of property if we, if we can no negotiate for that property. Um, they're willing to come down and, 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 and build a, a nice stadium here on St. Martin. Really? Where, where we can, yeah, where we can hold the, the Piper Davis League and other leagues as well. I'm even telling them, what about getting major league ball players to come down here and do spring training, where the the the, 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 the youth can come down and look at them um, practice. They do it in, in, in the Dominican Republic. Yeah. They do it in Venezuela and, and Puerto Rico, different countries. Why not St. Martin? So they have a whole team come down yeah. in the spring to get to, ready to for To train. Them. Yeah, because you, you can't stay in the United States where it's cold. Right. So, so they come down where, where you have summer to be able to train their, their, their players. And there's no, no better place than St. Martin. That's the place to go. Yeah. St. Martin, I think, is the greatest place in the world. So um, what are the youngsters saying to you? Well, the youngsters are very excited. One of the things that happened two years ago, mm -hmm. they were promised to go, I think it was to Aruba, and it didn't happen. And then the year after, they were promised again to go abroad. It didn't happen. So when I came with this whole um, Piper Davis League and the trip to Alabama in July, they said to me, is this an empty promise again? So I told them, no, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that they get to Alabama and be able to play in this tournament. I know it's, a, it's hard work. It's expensive. It's very expensive. You got to pay airline, transportation there, hotel. No, no, no. no. Um, we got to just get there. Really? The Piper Davis League, they pay for everything after that. They, they're going to pay the hotel fee, um, yeah. accommodation. They're going to pay for the, all the meals, all the transportation. The only thing we have to raise here on St. Martin is a trip to get to, to Alabama. Once we reach there, they're going to take care of everything else. That's a good deal. I think it's a, it's a, it's a great deal. How, how you got when they came here, When they came here back in, in, in February, they paid their own way to, to come to St. Martin. And we took care of everything after they came. We took care of transportation. Mm. We took care of um, the, the, the accommodation, the hotel accommodation, and the meals as well. Yeah. Who was the person you said that got you connected with that? Uh, Raphael Skeet. Uh, yeah. Because Raphael Skeet is St. Martin. Yeah, yeah. So he, said, he, he called me up and said, Jeffrey, um, you don't want to take over the situation. I've tried to, to get to St. Martin a couple of times with so many different people, and they didn't take me serious. I said, okay, 
then I told him exactly what I would want him to do in order for me to be able to bring these kids, um, to bring them to St. Martin and get them involved in the church with the children to let them understand it's a serious thing that, that they're going to be getting involved with, that they're really going to get to go to, to Alabama to play. So and, and they were happy to know that. So they, they always tell me, Jeffrey, make sure that we're going. So I'm going to do my best to be able to raise funds. And there are companies I already approached mm -hmm. that saying, hey, Jeffrey, we're going to take care of, 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 of getting them there. We're going to make sure that we contribute. Now, you have a selection process, I understand, right? Yeah, selection process, exactly. And that's going to be uh, quite... Yeah, that, that's going to be tough, <laughs> because all these guys think that, <laughs> that I'm going to be the one that's going to get selected, just like Little League and any other, any other league. Yeah. Um, you go with the best that you have. That, that, that's going to be a tough day. It's going to happen on the 23rd of May, where we're going to select the 16 best. And um, <laughs> it's going to be really rough for those that don't get selected to go. And among the 16 best, you're going to have catchers and yeah. uh, pitchers? First baseman, um, you have infielders, you have outfielders, you have pitchers, you have to go your, your best pitchers, and you have catchers as well. And good hitters. You have to make sure you go good hitters and guys who have speed as well. These are all the things that the, the scouts are going to be looking at when they reach to Alabama. Because they're going to have a lot of scouts looking at those guys. Um, they're going to be playing among, amongst about 1,200 different players. So you have to really play well to be able to get selected to, to go to the majors to, um, to try out. Let me ask you, because earlier this year when they came here, yeah. what was the impression that they gave you from the experience here? They, they are great guys. I mean, uh, Mr. Fred Plum, um, he's a founder, a great guy, very serious. Um, you have Mr. Um, Ricky Adams, great guy, um, who was very good and, and a very good motivator was, um, and he was a former baseball player and a coach after. That was um, Mr. Tom McGraw. I saw him play baseball when I was younger growing up. And, and I was able to sit and talk to him about baseball and, and how we see baseball. And one of the things he said to me, he said, I always want the, 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 the black kids that don't get opportunities to be able to get an opportunity to go and not only play baseball, but to be able to get a good schooling, to go to a good college and to be able to because whatever, he, he said, whatever you have up here, nobody can take from you. But with baseball, once something happens to you physically, then they just <laughs> let you go. And that is a tough thing where baseball is concerned. That's the tough part about baseball and, and playing professional baseball. And you don't find baseball players playing past their 40s that much anymore? Not that easy because you have new players coming up. Right. So the, the baseball um, team, the farm team, they're going to tell you, hey, they, they got new guys coming, but they're fast. They they are they, they, they can hit the ball better, etc. So they're going to be looking at the new players. That, that's why they go to the colleges mm -hmm. and they choose the baseball players from the colleges, and then they start to train them because you know you have the minor leagues, then you go to the major leagues after. But they're all professional baseball, whether you go minors or major. And and one thing the, the guys have to understand, even though you don't make it to the major league, there's always other things you can do. You can become a trainer. You can become so many things in, in Major League Baseball. So it's not just about just being a baseball player itself. If you don't make it one way, you can make it the other way. Another but you have to be willing to really be disciplined enough to go there and do what you have to do to be able to make it. Yeah, but if I'm going to go and want to be a baseball player, I want to make it to the Major. The yeah, yeah. I don't want to go in. Yeah, but, but, it, but it's not only you that's going to be um, um, there looking at. I mean, there's guys from the Dominican Republic. There's guys from Curacao, Aruba. There's guys from the state itself, even from Jamaica, because one of the guys that is coming here, he was a former baseball player, but he's a Jamaican, and he's coming to train the guys as well and give a clinic. So, so all over the, 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 the world now, they're playing baseball. And one of the things that the, the guys are telling me, why not try to get it in St. Kitts and St. Lucia and Antigua, just like how you have cricket? You get baseball and you start because once it's something new, everybody gets involved. And, uh, and, and if you got the money to put into it, you, you're going to have a big, big thing in, in, those, um, in those countries. Yeah. And, and, and we thank the Piper Davis League as well because they're the ones that they're giving us all the equipment to, to train with. They, they send out all the balls for us to, to train with. They're going to be giving us also the uniforms. So, so they're, they're a team or a league that is well, um, well established. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're investing in the players here because the return is great if they can get a player to other St. Martin. To, 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 to play in the majors. Yeah. That, that is one of their, their goals. But, but 
Um, also, they, one of their goals is to make sure that these players become um, college graduates. Yeah. That's important. And that's why— And, and they're going to they stress on that. And that's the reason why earlier I asked you how important is education, because you might have people playing the game, but when it comes to academics, they're very weak. Yeah. Yeah, but, but they, they, one of the things they're going to do is they're going to make sure that they, they, they work on their ac academics to bring them up to speed with college, because they have to go to college. Once they're playing baseball, they're going to have to go to college to make sure that, um, that they stay in the baseball, the baseball um, farm team. Because it, it is required for them to, to be in college and also train in baseball. Now, I, I have some people at home watching and saying, well, these youngsters um, right now that Mr. Richardson is speaking about, what school are they going to? What the, what? Yeah, some of them, they, they're going to high school. What, what is important is that, and some of them are working, but those, those that are working, they have to make sure, finish their high school if they didn't finish it. And one of the things that they have, very good on St. Martin now, you have the GED, and then you have the GED test that they can make, and then they have another test called the SAT, I believe it is. Not, yeah, that's a college entrance test. Uh. Exactly. All of them are tests that St. Martiners can do in order for them to be able to get to, to college. Mm. So even though they didn't make it in high school, um, they can still do these tests to be able to, to get, um, to get into, in, into college. So uh, you're working hard and making sure these youngsters uh, achieve their goal. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I think, I mean, they're very great baseball players. They're training tonight as well. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to get one or two of them here, but... Train at, at, at night, yeah? They wait. train every Tuesday and, and, and Thursday nights oh, from 7 to 9. They train at the Little League ballpark. Yeah, okay. But, but tonight they can't get a field because of the, of the, um, the carnival. So they're training now a lot of um, conditioning. Yeah? Yeah. Con what carnival have to do with that? What, car what carnival have to do with... Uh no, because um, the Little League ballpark, what they do is inside the, the ballpark itself, they, 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 um, they charge a fee for cars to park in the, in oh. the, in the, the Little League ballpark just okay. to make some money. Okay. And, and they say they don't want the ball to be playing on, on the field because in the event that a ball, mm -hmm. a fly ball or whatever get away and hit a car, it's going to be their responsibility. Yeah, they're making money tonight from parking. Yeah, from parking. Yeah, that's good. They're making the money from parking. How popular is baseball now? But, well, baseball, Little League is very popular here on St. Martin, so because Little League never stops. Every year they, they travel with a selection to go to one of those Latin American championships. Right. When I was young growing up, I traveled to Venezuela and other countries to play. So, so it's nothing that, that ever stopped. You have also the Pony League that travel as well. So uh, when, it, when it comes around baseball, L League, um, it, it's, it's a continuous thing. But what is not so popular right now is A-class baseball and double-A baseball. For four to five years now, we haven't had those leagues um, um, playing in St. Martin. So we, we are trying to bring that back to St. Martin, especially that, the A-class. That's an uphill battle, man. It's an uphill ba battle, but it's a challenge, and, and I love challenges. I, I think that we can do it if we do it the right way. Mm. And even with bringing these players, these um, professional baseball players, is, is, is going to stimulate the players to want to be become a, a major league baseball player as well. You ever try to figure out what happened in the first place, why we lost all those uh, teams? Look, Curacao has a, a, a slight problem like we have here in St. Martin. What's that? And, and it's actually technology took over a lot from a lot of things that, that we do. Just today, I was, um, before I came here, I made sure that I went to the barber to, to look good on television. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to a gentleman here, one of the, one of the, um, the police officers, and um, he was saying he went to, to, to the um, Chesterfield with his son. And then these two persons walked in, it was a mother and a, a son, and they started to, as soon as they sat down, they took out their, 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 um, their phone, their, their Samsung, and they started to BB, and, and for the whole 20 to 30 minutes that they were there, That's eating, all they, did? They, were, they were speaking to somebody else on the BB. While at, the, so, at the restaurant? At the restaurant. So they didn't have a chance to talk to each other. Wow. And they went there, I mean, for dinner, a right? mother and father for dinner. And you would believe that they would communicate with each other. And technology is taking over the communication, um, the communication aspect. And that is something we have, to, we have to be very careful with because I know of people that live together. And how do they call each other? Through a WhatsApp. <laughs> and, and that is not good. No. That is not the way to communicate. Yeah. In fact, I got to mention this because 
Um, you told me, send me a, a WhatsApp message. This week earlier, another person told me that. Mm. I don't have WhatsApp on my phone anymore. Uh, those oh, anymore, up. but yeah, you had it before. Had many, I remember um, I got a WhatsApp message from um, the then Prime Minister, Mrs. Westcott William, when her mother passed away. And I only got it like two days later because I never used it, you see. So oh, okay. I said, that after that, I said, no, forget about it. I'm just going to dump this thing out of my phone. So it's no longer on my phone, mm -hmm. but still, uh, I get people meeting me and tell me, well, you know, I send you a message, but uh, yeah, I Yeah, because can't it's respond. on our phone still. It's still on the phone. It's on yeah. my phone where I believe that you have WhatsApp. Yeah. So when, when I send a message out, I can see whether you receive it or not. But you should check I can too. see that. When was the last time that person was up? And if you see that person was up last time in 2015, you know yeah. that person is not, it's not using it. No, 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 that's true. That is yeah. true. So, yeah, so that's, and everybody seems to be using that now. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the way, to, I mean, look, I'm not saying it's a bad thing because communication wise, I think it's a very good thing. But the thing is, if you use it for the wrong reasons, then that's the problem. Because if I'm going with my son to, to have dinner, I want us to communicate and, 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 and catch up on, on quality. Time. Right. Not just he's talking to his friends on the WhatsApp, and I'm talking to my friends on the WhatsApp, and then we don't get no time to spend to speak to each other. So you can imagine at home the same thing is going on. Yeah, no. When I go out, I, I just I just turn my phone off, you know, and because the interruption is not necessary, though. Mm. But but it's not only WhatsApp. You have email, you have Skype, you have so many Facebook, you have so many different, yeah. you, have, you have so many different. Um, um, channels of communication. So you're saying that that's interrupting um, or yeah, it's, 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 it's one of the things that interrupting um, sports. Yeah. Because everybody's, I, I see people walk in the street and they're, they're WhatsApping each other. And, and they're not looking where they're going. Some, people, some kids even have um, earphones in the air. And, oh. they, and they don't even hear you when you blow the horn. I was watching a, a news show the other night and there's this country where arching is really a, a top sport. And since Western technology arrived and, and mm. the cellular phone and internet, mm. etc., now young people don't have any interest in that sport anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's one of the biggest reasons because in all days growing up, we didn't have all these techno these techno modern technology. We didn't have those things. Of course, we had a phone, but cell phone was not as 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 widely used as now. Now everybody, even the smallest child, have a cell phone. Only people with money had a cell phone back in the back night. in those. I remember that. <laughs> but everybody have a cell phone now, from the youngest child to the oldest child, but have their own cell phone. Some got two. Some have two. Exactly. A three. <laughs> yeah, and now you have the iPhone. You have so many different phones yeah. that they have, and it's kind of tough to see that that modern technology is taking over. And I'm not saying that it's bad. But what I'm saying, it should be used the right way. That's all. So when, when, when the youngsters come out to practice with uh, your organization, do you all make sure that they phones don't, are put away? They can't go on the phone. It's not, it's not, they're not allowed to. Mm -hmm. That is one of the, 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 um, the policies that you cannot come on the phone answering your phone. Even though you come on the phone, on um, the feed with your phone, yeah. uh, you can't answer it. You can't answer your phone. You have to have good, the whole two hours just playing baseball and practicing. And if you want to answer your phone, you have to ask. But it must be for emergency reason. Mm. You see? And, and they're very strict with it. Mr. Glenn Patterson, he's the head coach, and he's very strict with that. And, and Mr. Thomas as well, they're very strict with those things. You said earlier, how many players you said you had uh, earlier? We have, we have 27 players that are practicing right now. And you select them from different areas? Yeah. They, they're coming from St. Martin, um, St. Martin, Dutch and French side. North St. Martin and South, Southern St. Martin. So you got players really from, from the, the French side? From the French side that comes over to practice as well. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. Good. Because when we went to the French side, I think it was on Billy D where we were on, there were French players that called us and said, hey, we want to be a part of it as well. So they come and they practice as well with us. But we have mainly um, um, Dutch players that are, that are practicing. W what, what's the response from the parents now? How are they um, assisting? They, 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 the parents are, are very excited. But they want to make sure, but they looked at it, at it very skeptical. Why is it? Are they really going to go or are they not going to go? But I can tell you, <laughs> Jeffrey Richardson, a part of this, I'm going to make sure that I do whatever it takes for them to be able to go to, to, to it, it's Alabama. It's expensive uh, to, fly, yeah, it's expensive. to fly how many, uh, you said again, 16? 16 players. Plus, you're going to have other adults going along, right? So. Uh, we, we, we have a special deal that we got from American Airlines. Okay. Uh, because I wrote them myself, because I found out. How do you do group 
um, group group, um, group reservations. Yeah. So they, they gave me the 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 the, the, int, the the email address and everything, and I started to communicate with them. So they gave me a deal that that don't change. That that special deal is going to be there until we, we purchase the tickets. Oh, okay. They give us a time to to make sure that we we um, we register the, the players who's going to be going and the people who want to go. Because even even parents and persons from Simon that want to go, that let us know, I think it's before the 2nd of May. One, they leave us know exactly who's going. Then I think someplace in June, we have to give them the names of the people that are going. And then in J the middle of June, we have to make sure that all the, the tickets are paid for. So if someone watching this show tonight, yeah. and they, they want to go, to, yeah. they, can, they can call me on 553. 5512, that's 553, 5512. Mm -hmm. And they can, um, we can set up a time where we mm -hmm. let them know exactly what the, the procedures are, and they will be able to go as well. Because um, the more you get to go with you, the merrier it is. Because American Airlines, they give us a special fare to go. So that, that price is not changing. Uh -huh. It's going to remain that way because you know, now the airfare, whenever you buy it, the later you buy it, the, the prices go up. Mm. And keep increasing right. and increasing. And all in all situation is not like that. Our price is gonna remain the same thing throughout the um the, the time that we're gonna buy the tickets. Any girls in this uh, thing? No, there's no girls that are going with us that uh, are practicing. You no. remember that young girl that yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, huh? Of course, of course. Wow. But there there are girls that can play baseball very well. Yeah. But in the, in this case we don't have any girls that are traveling with us. They're not even training with us. That's a pity, man. It's a, exactly. Hey, women take over the world now, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Seems that way. Seems that way. I like it as a season. Like, you guys want to keep women on the baseball? No, no, we're not. No, no, no. When, when we did the registration uh, back in, uh, I think it was six weeks ago, we told everybody can come. We didn't say it was just for males. Males and females can come and sign up. Yeah. Because the league right now have females that are playing. So, so with the Piper Davis League, we do, we do females as well. But what is, it, what is important to know, where um, scouting the players are concerned, mm. is only boys are, that are going to be scouted. Only boys. On, on, only males. Yeah. yeah. Because I haven't seen a, a female in, in Major League Baseball as yet, that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long way off, right? Yeah. Just, just like the president, the pres, pre, presidentship, the presidentship now you have um, Mrs. Um, Hillary Clinton. And, and in the States, there, there was never a woman president as, as yet. Maybe the history might make, they might make history this time. In a row, history in a row. Yeah, yeah, history in a row, because the first black president, now you get a first woman president. It, it, it can happen. Well, I want Donald Trump to win. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, he's leading in every, every, every situation. I mean, he's a tough guy, and he's a guy that he says what he means and means what he says. And that's one of the things that's good about, about Donald Trump. That's why people are following him. Well, very interesting. I mean, I know, very interesting. I know you, you're a politician. Yeah. You've been around for a long time. Yeah. You know? And you know that when you're a politician, that it's very important what you say and what you don't say. Yeah. yeah so, but you, you, you are, what you did now, you throw away your politics, you're not going to be... No, of course, I'll be running into politics. I never sure. I will never throw away politics. Politics is a part of me as well. Oh. It's a part of me. I, I ran from 1995 up until now. Oh, okay. Uh, I always run in, in, in the elections. So you got 21 years. 21 years in politics, yeah. I remember when I, I, remember when I saw that I was very green in politics. <laughs> I remember that very clear. I remember the, the first time I even spoke on a podium. Yeah. I was scared, trembling. <laughs> no, you know what to say, not what not to say. Uh, well, not really. I, I I say what I mean and mean what I say. You saw you I'm said a, man Donald Trump, man. Yeah, that, that's the way I, I always was. Uh -huh. Some people think yeah, yeah, but but you you you're hitting on us. I said no. I'm just if if there's something that you're doing that I think is not right, I I would speak about it. Simply, yeah. that's how I am. But you've put a lot of interest and effort into the youngsters and baseball. Always, yeah. but even in politics. I believe in, in youngsters. I believe that youngsters are going to take over. They're, they're the next generation, and they are future leaders, so we have to. Mm. Well, you, you said a young guy. You talk like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty young still. 51 yeah. years is a pretty young age, but 
But persons start politics sometime when they're 30, 31, yeah. um, 35. I know of those that started 60, 65 years old. But usually they start, people start very young because they, they want to make sure that the energy is there to be able to, to really run and, and, and do it the right way. The problem is, you know, is that we've had five years of bad experiences with the young politicians. Yeah, because one of the things that I, I always tell people, um, and I, I have a mentor that I go to. I, I, I don't know if you know Mr. Pantaflet. I go to his house almost every week, uh, Mr. Dennis Pantaflet. Oh, okay. Um, I call him my mentor. I, I sit down with him and he explains. The Wonder me. Boy. The Wonder Boy. You know what they call him, the Wonder Boy, right? No, I, I know he's uh, a Wonder Boy. You remember that year he ran in got with 700 oh, plus four? <laughs> yeah, he, he, because he came, I think that year, it was the sequence of the list. Yeah. And he was able to, to on the 11 position, he was able to elect himself. I think he got over 700 votes, something like that. It was yeah, a lot. It was, it was a lot of votes, yeah. but it was enough to be able to, to, got, to get elected. On his own. On his own. Yeah. On his own, yeah. So but, but, but the thing is, um, you, you, you need somebody that you can look up to and, and ask questions to. Um, how you think this go and how, you know, you need that kind of person. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I tell young people all the time, always make sure that whatever you do, Pick a mentor so that they can tell you how the road is, how the journey is, in terms of where you're going. Because the destination I'm going to, um, Mr. Pantafet, he was there already. Yeah. So he understands it. But it's the world is changing so much, and everything is changing when you look around the island today. And, and most of the young people, they're not, they're not focused. I don't know if you see that in, in the young athletes. They, they tend to be here now, and then they're just, they're not really serious. And everyone is saying to me, that our biggest problem is getting our young people to be focused, dedicated, and really sticking to what they're saying. Exactly. But, but, but my whole thing is, how did they get that way overall? That's a question you have to ask yourself. How did they become that way? Mm. They didn't just drop out of the sky. Adults are the ones that, that, put, that are raising these kids, are supposed to raise these kids. One of the things I, I realized, and I used to be a director over a choir and sports as well. Um, and I realized that um, when you call a, 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 a parents' meeting, mm -hmm. a parents' um, pe meeting, a, a meeting for the parents, you will realize that hardly anyone shows up. And just the, the parents that you want to see because of their child, they don't show up to the meetings. But then a thing like Carnival, now that is going on, they will find money all over to go to Carnival. No, I have no, no problem with Carnival. But what I'm saying, we have to get our priorities right. Because you, you, you can't um, expect that kids going to be who they are or who you want them to be if you don't show them the right examples. you, you got to invest in your children. You have to invest in them. You know, I, I, I respect you a lot, Mr. Oral Gibbs. I remember when I used to pick up my, my son at Mr. Peter's College. Uh. I used to see you waiting on your children. I remember that very clear. Yeah. You never leave any bus carry them home because you realize, hey, if they get mixed up in buses, they're going to start maybe thinking the wrong way. And they, they're going to start getting involved with people or children that are going in the, right, the wrong direction. And you didn't want that. You did whatever you had to do to make sure pick up those kids. I remember those days. Well, you know, I, I, the thing is with, with me and my wife is that people expected us to send the children to a private school. They said, no, they're going to go where everyone yeah. is going. Milton yeah. Peters College is a great school. Sure. They're going to go there like anyone else. You yeah. know? And, 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 and I follow your kids as yeah. well. They're doing very well. I, 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 I follow what you, you say about them and stuff like that. And, and we should be proud of people like that. The but fact that you put, once you invest in them, you're going to get what you invest back out. But there are That's lot of, important. There are a lot of people that I see working hard at two and three jobs. Some of them came from Haiti, the Dominican mm -hmm. Republic, um, Guyana. Mm -hmm. And they, they're really putting some effort into their children. Yeah, and, yeah. And what is unfortunate is that sometimes some of, some of us who are born here and from here, we tend to just like, oh, just let the school do it, and that's it. No, you, you have to get involved. You've mm -hmm. got to be there with your, with your child. If you don't do it, it's not going to work. You, you see, one of the things I realized, I, I think, um, Earl, we, sometimes we have our priorities wrong. And that's our biggest problem, because I, I look at, for example, Parliament. I look at Parliament all the time. I try to look and see what they're doing in Parliament mm -hmm. and, and following, you know, the, the, the meetings. And I realized that, if you be sending the wrong messages to all young people, how do you expect they're going to grow up? How do you expect they're going to grow up? 
If you're arguing in Parliament, when you have to be talking about the people's business, but you're arguing among each other about simple little things, um, how, how do you expect our kids going to grow up? But you know what? Because they are the same people that our kids are, are looking up to, but they're not watching and, they, and they are showing the wrong. They're, 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 they're showing the wrong um, examples. But you know, they're not watching parliamentary meetings because you ask the average child. They don't look at it. Um, who are the members of parliament? They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. <laughs> that is true. My son, I make sure, explain to my son, I'm going to teach you all who's in parliament, who are the ministers. He knows everything about politics. Mm. And when he sees something that is wrong, he would always call me, hey, um, Daddy, did you see this and that? And that? Because I taught him to be that way. Yeah. So the parent got to be really involved, right? You got to get involved because, look, politics is everybody's business. People think that they can stay home and don't vote and, 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 and it's going to, the thing's going to change. Things are not going to change if you don't vote. It's going to remain the same. Or it might even get worse. So they think that they, they, they're doing something or they're doing something great. But you're not doing anything great by not voting. Yeah, but what, what, what you all are doing with the New Era Foundation is great because what you're doing is you're getting young people to refocus their attention in exactly. a positive air, which is sports. Exactly. And, and, and one of the things that a lady told, I told a lady, you know, um, a lot of persons have lost their confidence in politicians. You know, and I asked her, what do you do in order for you to regain that? She said, just do one thing, just don't worry. Just do stuff. You got to be able to go out there and do what you have to do. And so I said, okay. No, I just go out there and I do stuff. I, we're working on a, on a youth, um, the New Era Foundation, we're working on a youth development and training center. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that training center is going to be for one thing. It's going to be to mold young people to understand what it is to become a productive citizen. And a lot of businesses is buying into it because I had meetings with, with the Grand Marshal, but I had meetings with, um, with car dealers, and, and they're saying, hey, that's a great thing to do because one of the things, when we get kids here um, and working for us, we realize that they're not ready for the job market. We want to get them prepared for that. But you know some, so they understand what it is to work. You know some, Mr. Richardson, mm. we also have to understand that if we as parents can accept our children for what they are and what you said there about being a productive citizen, being a plumber is not bad. You know, whatever you want to do is not bad. bad. I it's nothing to be ashamed of. Exactly. My whole thing, even if you're a person that is a gasoline attendant or you work for a garbage um, collection, it is not a bad thing because not everybody's going to be academic. Right. And we have to understand that not everybody's going to be doctors and lawyers. When we were growing up, if you're a doctor, if you're studying a doctor or lawyer, you get all your attention. If you pass for Harvard, you get all your attention. But the thing is, I think every school is a good school. Right. And, and don't label a school as a bad school because even the vocational school or PSVE, all those schools, they, we should, all play we should, a role. they play a role in society because they produce mechanics. They produce construction workers. They produce people that we need on St. Martin yeah. to be able to, to, to build this country called St. Martin. And the thing is that what we've been doing is uh, focusing on only one area so other people feel like they're left out and young people feel like they're not important and everybody's important. Everybody's valuable. I tell young people all the time, and today when I went to Orion School to speak to the third graders, I, I told them, every one of you is valuable. You're important because guess what? Every one of you must play a role. If you're a, 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 a firefighter, another guy might be a singer or an entertainer, and another guy might be in politics, another might be a pastor, and we need all of them. Another guy might be, let's say, a businessman, yeah. but another guy might be in journalism, and that's something I want to see happen in St. Martin. More locals getting involved in journalism. I want to see more males get involved in teaching elementary school because it starts from there. When you look at most of the elementary school, it's basically females are teaching those, those kids. I want to see that we get back to male teachers teaching elementary schools. Wow. Because if we don't get those kids at elementary school, we're going to lose them at secondary school. And for persons who missed the beginning, you came to speak about the New Era Foundation and, exactly. the, and the activities you have ongoing, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, we have activities ongoing now, right now as we speak. Yeah. Uh, we have um, youngsters, about 27 of them, that, that are training um, to be selected to go to um, the Piper Davis International Tournament that is going to be held from July 11th to July um, 16th in Birmingham, Alabama. And um, out of the 27 persons, we're going to be, select 
We're going to be selecting um, 16 to travel to Alabama to play in the tournament, representing St. Martin. So, so we're asking people, especially um, the donors, we have, we have regular donors that we go to all the time, that, and I want to thank those donors. I, I think um, they, they, they should be given special recognition, and we will do that. Mm -hmm. And whenever you go to them, they always make sure that they, they, they contribute to you. That's because, because, number one, we have to play, pay for the field. We have to pay to practice on the Little League ballpark. Yeah. Of course. We're not getting it for free. And we, gotta, we, we have to pay for the guys that are coming down now mm. to train those, um, those players. That, that's a next um, budget that we have. Then we have to pay also to get the guys to Alabama. So, so, so the budget is pretty big. The budget, the budget the is pretty big. The thing I find strange is, is that uh, athletes having to pay to play on the ball field. That mm. should not be, you know. I, I pay to play? Yeah, no, yeah. We're paying to practice because the field doesn't belong to us. No, no, because I also. Field belongs to, but how do they, this, this association raise funds to be able to maintain it? No, no, I mean, it, it's, you have to have an island that's this size, whereby there are some fields where youngsters can go and play oh, without yeah. having to pay. Yeah, exactly. That's I, be, I believe that. And that's the way you're going to get more youngsters to exactly. play because even the Host Lake Ballpark, you got to pay for that as well because I asked them, um, okay, it's a little cheaper because it's government owned, mm. but my whole thing is you have to pay. Right. Everywhere you go, you have to pay for it. Wow, look at what we became. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things government can do because it's, 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 it is about molding young people. You, you can say, look, we're going to do a subsidy and make sure that we, we maintain the fields. And then so if anybody, gotta, any team have to practice or any youngsters have to practice, and especially if they're going to represent St. Martin, they can practice there for free. Yeah. Well, but the government have to get involved. We other time, Mr. Richardson, just uh, 20 seconds remaining. Yeah, I want to just uh, mention, uh, I want to thank you for having me on. Um, the people are going to be hearing more about the Piper Davis League, and they're going to be hearing more about our trip to Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, that is scheduled for July 11th to the 16th, and persons that, that we want to, to make sure they contribute to make this um, trip a reality. So, Mr. Richardson, thank you, and uh, much success with your thank, thank you very much. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Till then, good night. Take care. Bye.